All right, so we're gonna check my swing out, what I'm doing, and see uh, how we can make me better. Hit this ball, right? I'll just yeah, get ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold it. Mm -hmm. All right, now, before we even go, mm -hmm. let go of the club, let your arms just relax. Let them relax, let your arms mm -hmm. just hang in front of yep, you. Yep, gotcha. Okay, see, right now, you have an extremely weak left hand grip for you. Mm -hmm which is gonna make you have to do a lot of manipulation with the face, either on the backswing or the downswing to try to square the face because you can't let the momentum of the club elongate your left arm through impact and the face come back to square. Okay, Okay. so your grip, you see how your arm hangs natural? Mm -hmm. When you swing a golf club, this club is gonna do this to your arm. Yeah, pull it Whatever straight. Whatever physiology you have in this shoulder relative to how this shoulder socket relates to force, Yeah. That's square, that's gonna square the face. Where you had your grip, yeah. unless you do something, what's the face gonna do? Yeah, be wide open. Okay, yeah. so you f you shut the face down big time mm -hmm. because you can't let the weight of the club elongate your left arm if you, and not fix the face. So you say, I've had a, a, a weak grip and then learned to really close it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to compensate so, for my- So a neutral left hand grip for you so that when, based on how your shoulder works, and everybody's mm -hmm. shoulder's a little different, Yeah is right there. Yep. Now, now put your right hand on. Now your right hand doesn't go on the way your arm hangs natural. Your right hand goes on. Well, now we're breaking the rules. No. Okay. It has a different role. I'm gonna okay. show you in gotcha. a minute. Gotcha, gotcha. This valley fits right on the back of that thumb. Mm -hmm. This palm and this wrist joint are mirror images of that club face. Okay. Your joints have what they call proprioception in them. Yes. This joint mm -hmm. knows, without you even thinking, mm -hmm. where it's the most stable from. Yeah, where it exists in space. To, well, and that's where yours is the most where it's stable strongest. from. Yep. Now, if you go the other way, that joint is going, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. So it's either going to yeah. try to yeah. twist it going back or do something to the face coming down. Yep. This joint right here, here's mm -hmm. how it works. The, the proprioception of that joint. If yep. I was to sit here, yeah. if I fell to the ground, okay? Yep. What would my wrist do? Oh yeah. They wouldn't uh -huh. twist this way or this nope, way. Nope. Why? Because you'd fr break your wrist. They know what the, how impact is going to be right. accepted. So when this yeah. wrist is anticipating impact, mm -hmm. it's going to get in a position where it's at its strength so that when it hits, the, the, this wrist joint can handle the force. Yep. So if you turn your hand up here a little bit, yeah, it's yeah. going to go here. Yeah. If you go under, it's going to go there. Your body will anticipate what's going to happen and twist to that right. condition. So a yeah. lot of square in the face with this hand mm -hmm. is this joint's anticipation of impact. If it's on there correctly, mm -hmm. it's going to pretty much do it. Just like if you fail, your hands would go like this. Yep. They wouldn't twist sideways. You don't have to think mm -hmm. about lining yep. your wrists up with force. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a neutral grip for you. Okay, cool. Okay, now just go ahead and hit one. Okay. I do that a lot recently. Try right, do it again. Spin it. Okay. How's grip. that grip, Mike? Yeah, you're you're about a three knuckle grip, which is where most of the that's right, right there. Okay. A three knuckle grip would be the best for me, you're saying? That's neutral for you. Okay. So change your grip. Now get used to the face with the new grip. Three knuckles. There you go. This is like. Yeah. Now, now just put the club face on the wall. Hit it a hundred yards. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's 150 yards, but it's maybe 60. Yeah. So again, I, the other thing that happens when I do this with people is all of a sudden you make a swing that you think is half speed. Yep. The reason you thin everything is because you run out ahead of it so hard. Oh yeah, yeah. Woo. So you got your new grip. Now make the club face work with your new grip. Feel the face in your hands. Mm -hmm. Just square the club face on the back of the ball. Don't even worry about moving. Just put the face on the ball. And you spend a little bit of time and you find out the timing for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then you add speed. There you go. And don't get frustrated with yourself. People are so impatient. Hard on themselves, yeah. One swing and they miss hit one ball or they shank one ball and they go, oh, this is terrible. I'm going, really? I know. This is a process. If you know the process and you come at it the right way mm -hmm. and you build your game, it still, it still takes time. It still takes effort, folks. Yeah. I mean, anybody who has a game, anybody who's good's earned the right to be there. The question is, how hard did you make it on yourself to get where you're at? And if you're plateauing and you're not a low single-digit handicap, there's yeah. probably a concept in your head that's getting in your way 
of allowing you to be consistent enough to move up to the next level or your short game is terrible, which yeah. is, that's a whole nother thing. Okay, so that's a pretty good grip right there. Huh? Yep. Now when you add speed, try to add speed pushing away from the club, ah. not going forward. Push away from the club, there you go. That was different. So remember the, the cable that's hooked on mm -hmm. your hips? To add speed, push away, don't go forward. I keep doing that. Let's talk about what's happening there. Yeah, on these thin shots. On the thin shots yeah. and the ones that you're, you're hitting out to the right. It's, set up to the it's ball. It's almost on the hosel. Okay, set up to the ball. Yeah. Okay, here's the next task before we get speed. Yep. You see where my hands are here? Mm -hmm. Swing up to the top of your swing and stop. See where my hands are? Mm -hmm. This is where your hands have got to go. Your hands come down <laughs> here. They are not going that's, to the ball. That's why, yeah. that, see that, you just drug the handle. Yeah. That's why everything's thin and to the right. Gotcha. Okay, so do that again. Swing up. Now, this is your task. Your hands come down here again. So what do your body, there you go. You really get that molasca feeling. Well, it's not molasca, this is physics. When you feel, this is, when you feel that. This is an inside circle. Right, There's but the, you, you understand what I'm oh, saying. Oh, I do. Yeah. So you go up to the top, here is your task. You gotta get your hands to come back here. So your body has to do whatever it has to do to not get in the way of this. And the club goes out to the ball. Your hands go this way. The minute you start down, your hands come out here and that. And then you're trying to figure out how to catch that up, which is why you've learned how to shut the face down because you really can't catch it up. How do you get people to aim their hands better? Do you put something on the ground yeah. there or whatever? You can, you can do whatever. You have them slow speed. Just go ahead and set up yeah. there. I mean, you'll see VJ and these guys, they'll put sticks in the ground uh, gotcha. or they'll have somebody gotcha. standing like this. And I'll mm -hmm. say, make a practice swing first inside the ball. Yep, yep. So don't hit the stick. There you go. Do it again. And then you have to tell me, first of all, if you try to fire your hips, you're gonna, you, you won't be able to get under this stick. I'll, be, I'll actually would maybe put my hip into the thing. Yeah, so you can't invade the space. So you've got to create more space. There you go. Now come up to the ball at that speed. Mm -hmm. Now we're testing your, yep. your discipline. discipline. At that speed, run the club into the ball and don't hit the stick. Better. There yeah. you go. So the reason you're thin and to it the right. It feels weird because it feels like there's a lot of angle, you know what I'm saying, like between here and here. And yeah. it feels like it wants to come in a straight line, you know, yeah, and it's, it's hard to have this angle at impact. Well, that's the angle mm -hmm. in the impact. If your hips push away from the ball, the angle, your spine angle, that's what keeps your spine angle. You're so used to doing this and your yeah. hands are used to being up like this yep. that when you actually do maintain your distance from the ball, your hands feel a lot lower. Mm -hmm. And if your hands are moving in closer to your body, yep. the physics of that, if the handle of the club is moving in closer to me, what's the club head doing? It's speeding up. Yep. If my hands move further away from me, that's slowing down. Yeah, there's, there's, everything's going that way. Exactly. I know that some people say that one of the reasons golf is so hard is that at setup, there's this angle here, and at, and at impact, it's more, it's a straight line. How well, does that, does that relate to this at all? Or? Well, some, okay, yeah. the way you grip a club, because we don't grip a club in the palm of your left hand, here's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. When you swing a club, it's going to do this. Yep. So this left wrist is going to go to there, yep. okay? There's still an angle here. Yes. So if we set up, if you put the club to the ground, mm -hmm. this club shaft is going to aim just above your belt buckle. Yep. That's where the physics of the joints will end up lining this. I don't care where you start with your hands. Yeah. They're going to go right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of people start with their hands way too low. So when they come into the ball, when the weight of the club starts to go down, they have to pull up away from it because that's going to happen. Yeah, right. So when I start out, I set up, and a lot of tour players, you'll see them do this. They'll let the weight of the club, see they're letting it do this. Uh -huh. Well, the weight of the club all of a sudden just puts a little bit of pressure on this wrist. So this is flat, okay? yep. it's not bowed, it's flat. And then they come up and then they set the club in like this. Then they set their body up to fit. Now when I swing, when I come back down and that club does that, it's going right back to the same place. Yeah. If I put my hands like this and come into it, well, they're gonna move up because you can't stop it from doing that. So that's something they do like, uh, sh here, let me try that. Well, they'll go yeah. take a hold of the club. Yeah, yeah. So if you kick the club off the ground and you just let the weight of the club drop, yep. all of a sudden it'll, it'll kind of, this pushing against this part will kind of lock your wrist. Mm -hmm. You feel that pressure? Yep. Okay, so then they set the club in with that exact same mm -hmm. situation. 
because that's going to be where their arms are going to come. That's This is where natural golf got a lot of their stuff from. Right, that's what I was thinking. But they have a little bit different grip. Now, that's perfect for you right there. Now, just hit it from there. Oh, that feels handled very high. Well, just hit it. Okay. Humor me. See, if we put you on video, that's where your hands go every time anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to not start there, that means your hands are going to raise a lot more than they sh need to. Okay. When your hands raise, the club also goes out of its arc. Yep. So how you set up to the ball anticipates or makes it so you're going to have to either make more compensations or less to get the club face to the ball. Yep. So you don't like an exact line. No. But, but you do like a higher handle than what's normally. Well, there's mine right there. So you want to call that a high handle. It's okay. really not a high. I mean, you stood behind me and watched that. You're not, no, you're it's not, not, no. Okay, but that's just enough where the club's in my fingers and the club's on this heel pad. Mm -hmm. yep. When the weight of that club pushing on this heel pad kind of locks that wrist. That's when you know you have enough. Well, yeah, because that's what it's going to do when I swing. Yep. Okay, and then the other thing I told you about tasks. If you get the club face, people understand the face. And the next task is as you're swinging your arms, yep. Your arms have to come back to where they started. Mm -hmm. So if you start out with face control and then your hands come back to where they started and you start with little swings doing that, your body is not going to make a move yeah. that won't let your hands get, if that's the task. Yeah. Most people don't even know this is a task. Yep, get the hands to where they started. They think yeah. this is the task. Yep. And this is the task. And so now relative to being able to control a face, You've just created a monster. Can you do it? Sure you can. I mm -hmm. did it for yeah. a long time and did yeah. pretty good with it. What were the ramifications? It took 10 times more practice. It broke me down physically, and it really broke me down mentally because who did I blame when I didn't play well? Yeah. Me. Yeah. You choking fool. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. All right, we've had a fantastic time here on the range. I have anyway. Mike did me too. Me too. Yeah, Mike did too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for watching that. If you're interested in seeing more with Mike Malaska, order The Source of Power. It is a four-part documentary series all about four different fantastic instructors all over the country that agree on where power is created and how best to create power in the golf swing. Mike's part talks a lot about practice and how to build up your golf swing for uh, consistency and power and also about his move that he makes to generate the most amount of power without hurting yourself which he developed after swinging a different way that really did hurt his neck and back a lot so he developed this way which he says no pain at all now so you want to order the source of power now while we're in the winter season because that's when you can really retool the sequence of your swing in the winter time when you're not playing golf as much because once you go to play you kind of have to do what you have to do just to score so uh, you kind of reset back to your original way so a couple months in the winter is the perfect time to really start getting your swing in sync and in proper sequence and that's what the source of power is all about there's a link for it in the description below huge thank you to mike for that awesome day together also when you get the source of power you get all the raw footage from my time with mike so huge thanks to mike I have a plan to go back out there and do some more filming with him because it was so much fun the day that we had together. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. Subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Later. Bye.